Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details. Hello everybody, welcome to this Talking Tendons podcast. My name is Prof Peter Meliaz from Monash University. Um, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, today a narrative um, review. If you haven't seen it and you're interested in Achilles tendonopathy, have a look at it. It's open access, published by the Journal of Physiotherapy. Um, it's an invited narrative review on the physiotherapy management of Achilles tendonopathy. And I'm just going to bring out a couple of examples from that narrative review. Today's episode is going to be talking about outcome measures. Two of the outcome measures that um, were uh, uh, included in the um, uh, important outcomes to or outcome domains, I should say, to assess in tenopathy people uh, were psychological and pain with loading. And this was in the consensus work that we did um, a few years back. Um, have a look at the paper, Vizincino uh, 2019, BJSM. Um, I'll link it to this um, Talking Tendons podcast as well. So I'm just going to pick up on pain with loading and with kinesiophobia. Um, and talk about those. Now, we do talk about in tendinopathy this sort of proportional load pain relationship, which is important for diagnosis. So if you if you have an Achilles patient and they do a calf raise, they report three out of 10, you would expect that if you got them to do a hop, the pain would be um, higher than three out of 10. Now, that generally does happen. But um, one of my PhD students, Igor Sancho, has recently um, completed some data collection looking at um, uh, biomechanically looking at the forces in the Achilles tendon and relating that to pain reported. And, and what he found was interesting and probably shouldn't be surprising, but given we have bought into this sort of thinking about a proportional load pain relationship, um, uh, it, it sort of, when you, when you think about it on a surface level, it goes counter to that. And, and what he found was that um, uh, even though we saw this you know increase in force with uh, going from things like calf raises to hopping, uh, the pain that people reported with those activities was hugely variable and not really related to the force going through the tendon. Um, so although on an individual level we see a proportional load pain relationship, if you look at a group level, um, expression of pain is highly variable and likely to be influenced by other factors, not only force. So what we can say is that pain is not a surrogate for tendon force. And as I say, that's not surprising for us because we know pain is biopsychosocial. Uh, so so that... that um, that work is not published yet, it's under review, um, but I wanted to mention it because it sort of relates to some of the other points that I want to make uh, today uh, in relation to these um, uh, pain with load outcomes and kinesiophobia. So pain with load is a good outcome, but we need to also consider that it's um, not a surrogate for force. Okay, that's the first point. Uh, the second point that I want to make about um, um, the pain that people report is that it can be influenced, um, as Igor's data shows, by other factors. And one of those factors is uh, most likely kinesiophobia, and that is fear of movement. Um, and, you know, that's rooted in um, beliefs that, you know, they may be damaged with pain, um, you know, that they're going to get, um, that they may, they may get worse if they load, those types of beliefs, okay? Um, so um, another, another PhD student, Sanam Tavakoli, has um, recently um, uh, had a paper, um, well, it's, it's still, this one is also um, still going through review, but um, she has presented the data recently at a conference and um, it will be um, available soon. Uh, she, she looked at uh, 30 people with Achilles tendinopathy in a cohort study and um, she was interested in uh, their, their daily activity. Um, so daily time spent walking and running is one example. And we measured that with IMU sensors attached to the person's ankle. We measured that over a week. So they wore the sensor for a week. Um, and then um, she was also interested in daily pain intensity um, and the relationship between 
um, activity and pain intensity. Um, and um, uh, what she found, and this is a, a summary, I definitely recommend having a look at the paper for further details. But what she found was that there was a relationship, as you might expect, between daily pain intensity um, and also daily time spent walking and running. However, um, the relationship was influenced by kinesiophobia. So people with low kinesiophobia had a, had a better relationship between um, activity and pain. People with high kinesiophobia had a lesser relationship between daily activity and pain, which indicates that people with uh, kinesia, that or kinesiophobia uh, influence, influences the reporting of pain. So the way that people report pain may be influenced by their kinesiophobia. Okay, so um, so that, that that was that was interesting. Um, now in the same cohort study, um, Sanam also found that there were uh, correlations, moderate correlations between um, kinesiophobia and um, activity measures, both self-reported and the IMU measures that I mentioned. Um, but there weren't. Um, as strong and certainly not significant correlations between severity measured with the visa um, for these Achilles tendinopathy people and um, self-reported and IMU measures of physical activity. So it seems to be that uh, kinesiophobia influences how much people walk, uh, possibly more so than their severity. Um, so, so what we're seeing is that there's, there's, there's possibly influences on participation, there's influences on the report of pain with kinesiophobia, um, and this and this really relates also to what um, Igor has shown, and that is that uh, forces are, are really not the full story when we're talking about um, tendon pain. Um, so this all is interesting, and from a clinical point of view, um, it sort of leads us towards. Um, thinking about kinesiophobia a little bit more and also measuring it in our practice. Now, Ruth Cimenti from the US has recently done um, uh, some work in kinesiophobia. So there's a, there was a, um, a study where they looked to validate for Achilles tendinopathy, or at least partly validate the 11 question, um, the 11 question version of the Tampa scale for kinesiophobia. Um, and that's the one that I would recommend that people use. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's, it doesn't take, uh, it doesn't take long. There's 11 questions related to kinesiophobia, um, and the the um, Cimenti paper from 2021 in Frontiers in Pain Research. They have, um, they, they've um, uh, they've looked at um, defining what is uh, could be considered as high, moderate, low, and minimal kinesiophobia. So, for example. If they score higher than 36, then they can be defined as having high kinesiophobia. So that's, that's hugely useful um, in a clinical context for people with Achilles tendinopathy. Um, so definitely have a look at that. The other thing that was really interesting that did in this uh, in this study was they um, they looked at um, expected pain versus actual pain, and people with high, uh, and that's before they were doing certain load tests. People with um, expected pain with higher levels of expected pain. Um, also were more, uh, sorry, with a higher discrepancy, so higher expected pain versus lower actual pain, were more likely to have kinesiophobia. Um, so that's another another expression of kinesiophobia that you can look for. Probably the last one that I want to discuss today is looking at um, apprehension. So often when we're looking at Achilles tenopathy uh, patients and we see them clinically, we see that they display apprehensive behavior. So Commonly, it's with activities that they fear. So they fear doing things that will that they perceive to be, um, you know, potentially damaging or high loading for their Achilles problem. Um, one example is hopping. So they, when you ask them to hop, I mean, you, you know, you see a whole spectrum of responses from, yep, fine, no problem at all, to the other end of the spectrum, I don't want to hop, I'm not going to hop. Um, in the middle somewhere, you see apprehensive behavior. So they set themselves, they look apprehensive, they look, um, you know, they, they sort of um, display behaviors um, that sort of suggest that they're not, um, they're not happy to hop. Uh, so look for those apprehensive behaviors, delaying, um, you know, what I mean by setting themselves is they might go onto their toes. Um, 
they might go onto their toes to um, you know when they before they start hopping to sort of you know reduce the load into dorsiflexion um, in the tendon so they hop high on their toes um, so that's just an example of uh, what you might see. So um, in summary, look for kinesiophobia is important. It influences, uh, we know that pain is not a surrogate, sorry, um, tendon force um, is not a surrogate for pain. We know that um, kinesiophobia probably influences um, expression of pain, but also how much people walk. Um, it probably influences uh, expected pain uh, before load tests. So ask them about expected pain during the load test, look for kinesiophobia, uh, look for apprehension uh, during your load test. Uh, and also, if you want to quantify um, with a validated outcome, um, use the Tampa 11 question um, version of the Tampa where we do have some, uh, you know, some validation. Uh, have a look at the study. I'll also link in this um, Talking Tendons op uh, episode the um, Chimenti 2021 paper um, so you can have a look at how they validate because it was a quite interesting um, how they did it. Um, uh, so yeah, that's great. So hope hopefully that's helpful. Um, I will do I'll do a couple of other ones that are related to this um, um, narrative. Um, sorry, this topical invited topical in general physiotherapy. I'll do a couple of other episodes of Talking Tendons. So I'll see you in the next one. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.